Well, once again, Merry Christmas, everyone. I pray your Christmas was spent with loved ones, eating good food, maybe playing games, watching movies, all that good stuff. And now, here we are, the day after. Perhaps the plan is to clean up the house a bit. Maybe you have more events to attend today, or maybe your plan is to go home and take a nap. No matter what the plan, I pray your last week of 2021 is a good one. Our Advent series uh, during this uh, December has been Cooking Up Christmas. And that series wraps up today. See what I did there? Uh, We've been talking about Christmas food, how it relates to this time of the year as well as to our Christian walk. And today's no exception. Today we are talking about leftovers. If you hosted an event for Christmas, chances are you have leftovers in your fridge as we speak. And as foreign as this is to me, I would imagine there are some of you who don't care for leftovers. Maybe you feel like the food isn't as good the day after. Or maybe you just don't like eating the same thing two, three, four days in a row. (laughs) I, however, can't even begin to relate to that because I love leftovers. You know, the party's over, you're cleaning up, it's a little sad, but then you remember, ha, there's leftovers in the fridge. (laughs) And while some of those leftovers may not look like they did yesterday, maybe the jello is a bit runny, uh, the rolls don't have that shiny outer crust anymore, but everything still tastes good and Depending on the food, if you had chili or if you had soup, sometimes the second day it tastes even better. So it's a happy moment for me as that microwave is humming, there's still good food here, and it's worth finishing up. Our first gospel reading this morning is about Simeon and Anna, two very faithful and devout people very advanced in age, and by society standards, perhaps leftovers. Simeon, an old priest, and Anna, a prophet and widow of 60 plus years, she spent all her time at the temple. They never lost hope that God would keep his promises. I'll be reading out of the second chapter of Luke, verses 25 through 40. It begins with the prophecy of Simeon. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. The prophecy of Anna continues in verse 36. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phenuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. 
She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Well, as we talk about leftovers today, even this piece of scripture could be considered a leftover. How often do we focus on the birth of Jesus, the shepherds, the magi, and then stop there, not taking the time to read beyond that traditional Christmas story? Simeon and Anna were at the end of their lives, but they certainly hadn't given up. They may not have been in the prime of life. Society may well have viewed them as leftovers, but they knew God was not done with them just yet. All that Simeon had longed for was suddenly right in front of him, wrapped up in this baby. As he holds Jesus, I can only imagine the incredible joy he is experiencing this fulfilled expectation and realized hope. Both Simeon and Anna praise God and speak of Jesus in ways that surprise even Mary and Joseph. Just like that leftover food, there's still good stuff here, and it's worth finishing up. You know, sometimes life can leave us feeling like leftovers. I mean, the past two years have definitely left their mark on us. We might be feeling more like that sad-looking jello, feeling like our best days are behind us. I don't know about you, but there are days when I feel as though I've got so little left to give It's not even worth offering. Have you heard the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000? It's a pretty popular one. And talk about having only a little left to give. This story, incidentally, is the only miracle besides the resurrection that appears in all four Gospels. It's an important one. If you remember, there's a huge crowd that has gathered. It's getting late. The disciples wanted to send the people away so they could go get food on their own. And Jesus says, you feed them. In fact, in John's gospel, it says Jesus tested Philip by asking, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? And Philip replies to Jesus by saying, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. That's kind of like us, isn't it? We put our human limitations on the creator of the universe. The disciples protest, all we have is a boy's lunch, five loaves of bread and two fish. But we know what happens. After feeding the multitudes, there were 12 baskets left over. The boy didn't have much, but he offered what he had. God can work with that. Don't fail to act. That's the message to us here. Don't fail to give, to pray, to hope. Just because we can't see the solution. God takes what we offer and gives in abundance. In this case, it was a young boy who made the difference. God uses people from all walks of life, sometimes the powerful, the wealthy, the privileged, the famous, but often it's the lowly, 
the outcasts, young and old, the disregarded and the forgotten. Yes, the leftovers. The Christmas story is a great example of that. A teenage girl is chosen to carry the Messiah. The angel appeared to the shepherds, the lowest in society at that time. Even the birthplace of Jesus, a place where the animals were kept. Even when we're feeling like leftovers, if we make ourselves available, God will provide the resources needed. I just watched a movie last week called Ron's Gone Wrong. It's a fun animated Disney flick. The main character, Barney, uh, he's a, in fifth or sixth grade. He has no friends. He's, he's just trying to get through each day, trying to blend in. He feels like everyone else has their thing. You know, there's the gaming kid, there's the class clown, there's the fashionista, but he feels like he has nothing to offer. And he thinks he's the only kid in school who ever feels lonely. We're pretty good at comparing ourselves to others and consequently thinking what they've got going on is way better than anything I've got going on. Unfortunately, social media has kind of taken this to a whole new level. The fact is, folks, we're all unique. We all bring a different gift set to the table. If we're comparing ourselves to food, and really, why not? We, uh, would we want all potatoes, all jello, only rolls, only meat? Heavens no, of course not. The different foods complement each other. And eating from different food groups, it's a great way to stay healthy. Don't miss that analogy here. This not only applies to our physical health, but to our spiritual health as well. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If God is calling you, and believe me, he is calling you, then he will also equip you. The body of Christ is rich and diverse, and yes, broken and imperfect. But that's where God shines. Second Corinthians, God tells us his grace is all we need. His power works best in weakness. Jesus comes for the broken, the sick, the outsider, the sinner. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning with verse 21, there's a story of a Syrophoenician woman who is asking Jesus to heal her daughter. The text reads, Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment. This is kind of a difficult piece of scripture. 
This is kind of a difficult piece of scripture. I struggled with it for a long time. And then I read a commentary by Austin Gentry. He's a, a young adults pastor in Houston, Texas. And he was actually commenting on a commentary by Tim Keller. So, you know, a lot of us have, a lot of people have struggled with this. This woman, she's a leftover by the standards of the day. She really had no right to approach a rabbi. It sounds as though Jesus is not only turning this woman away, but insulting her as well. But as I read, and as Gentry points out, upon taking a closer look, Jesus is using an unusual word for dogs here. A word that really means puppies. I thought that was so interesting. It seems to speak more to the woman as a mother. First the children eat, then you feed the pets. He goes on to say this then is more of a parable, a metaphor, as opposed to an insult. As Gentry explains, Jesus goes on to say, look, there's an order here. I'm here for the Israelites first. Then the Gentiles and the other nations will follow. This woman, however, she's a mother. For any of you moms out there, you know what I mean by that. She isn't about to take no for an answer. As Gentry puts it, she's not saying, Lord, give me what I deserve on the basis of my goodness. She's saying, give me what I don't deserve on the basis of your goodness. So why do I tell you this story? Because it's not about what we bring or who we are. We may not feel worthy or gifted or any of those things. Jesus has come to comfort and save his people, all his people, even the leftovers. Like Simeon, we rejoice in his birth. And now it's our turn to long for the day when he'll come again. I'm going to close today with a prayer for the new year. It's titled, We Dare to Ask. It's written by one of my favorites, Ted Loader. Let's pray. We ask only a few things more, O oh God. A few small, mustard seed size, faithful, saving things to walk with you in each moment without plotting for tomorrow. And so to really consider the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, and find the treasures hidden in the round of the daily. To learn by leaning into your spirit, to be present to others without preoccupation, to engage without having to win, to disagree without being judgmental, to accept outcomes without despair, to succeed or fail without misplacing hope, to tune to the bracing hum of the stars, to fathom enough without dismissing fathomless mystery of your creation, our brothers and sisters, and the grace and mercy and power of your embrace that holds close each small one of us and everything all together. In Jesus' name, amen.